Welcome to the Best Laptops for Programming Awards Show, where I will be rewarding each of these laptops for programming with exactly what they deserve. Links to all of these laptops for programming will be in the description below. Let's go. The GOAT, Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 13 Aura Edition. The ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 13 is simply the best laptop I've ever tested. Somehow, Lenovo made it even thinner and lighter than last year's model without compromising durability or performance. The keyboard remains absolutely flawless, giving me the perfect typing experience during long coding sessions. Intel's Core Ultra Series 2 chip delivers smooth performance for my daily programming tasks, and the PCIe Gen 5 SSD is blazing fast for compiling large projects. Battery life isn't class leading, but the portability more than makes up for it. I can carry this thing all day without noticing it in my bag. At around $2,000, it's definitely pricey, but for serious programmers who need the ultimate ultra portable, this is as good as it gets. Biggest letdown, Dell XPS 13 9350. I had high hopes for the XPS 13 with its new Intel Lunar Lake chip, but this laptop left me seriously disappointed. The keyboard and touch bar are mediocre at best, making long coding sessions uncomfortable and frustrating. While Intel's Core Ultra 7 258V does offer decent performance, it falls behind the Snapdragon X Elite in multi-core tasks. I notice this especially when compiling larger projects. The connectivity is awkwardly restrictive with just two USB-C ports, which meant I was constantly juggling dongles during development. The OLED display looks gorgeous, but it absolutely tames the battery life. I barely got 9 hours of mixed use. For a premium-priced laptop, the XPS 13 simply has too many compromises to recommend for serious programming work. Trying too hard, MSI Prestige 16 AI EVO. The MSI Prestige 16 AI EVO really wants you to believe it's an AI powerhouse, but in reality it's just a solid mid-range performer with some marketing hype. The Intel Core Ultra chip does handle everyday programming tasks well. I had 70 Chrome tabs open alongside multiple development tools without any slowdown. The integrated Arc GPU is a nice upgrade from older Intel graphics letting me do some light gaming during coding breaks. At 1.5kg, it's surprisingly light for a 16-inch laptop, making it reasonably portable for its size. While MSI touts its AI capabilities, truth is this laptop doesn't even qualify as a Microsoft Copilot Plus PC due to its weaker NPU. It's a decent machine for programming, but don't buy it because of the AI branding. That's just marketing fluff. Best bang for your buck. Lenovo ThinkPad E16 Gen 2. I've been using the ThinkPad E16 Gen 2 for my coding projects, and it's seriously impressive for the price point. The keyboard is incredibly comfortable for long programming sessions, and the full numpad comes in handy when I'm working with data. What really surprised me was how quiet the fan stays even during heavy CPU stress. I can compile code without sounding like I'm about to take off. The 1200p display isn't the most color accurate, but at 353 nits it's bright enough for all my work, and the battery life has been solid throughout my workday. For programmers on a budget, you can't beat the combination of upgradeability, modern port selection and reliable performance. The Overachiever, Lenovo Yoga Pro 9i. The Yoga Pro 9i has been my daily driver for a few weeks, and this thing is an absolute beast that refuses to be put in a box. The Core Ultra 9 processor tears through my development environments in virtual machines without breaking a sweat, while the RTX 4050 lets me actually game after work hours. I'm constantly impressed by the gorgeous 3200-2000 display that makes code look crisp and clear, though I wish the battery lasted a bit longer during marathon coding sessions. The keyboard has the perfect tactile feedback that makes typing feel almost therapeutic. And the 5 megapixel webcam makes me look incredible on client calls. If you're a developer who needs serious power but doesn't want to lug around the gaming laptop, this is your perfect middle ground. God tier, Asus ProArt P16. The Asus ProArt P16 is honestly the most premium development machine I've ever used. It's changed how I work. The 4K OLED touchscreen display is absolutely stunning, making my code and UIs look better than they have any right to. With perfect color accuracy that helps when I'm designing interfaces. The AMD Ryzen AI Knight Ajax 370 processor paired with the RTX 4070 handles everything I throw at it. From running multiple Docker containers to compiling massive projects in seconds. The thermal management is exceptional even during intense workloads. The keyboard stays comfortable and the system remains stable. Yes, it's expensive, but the build quality, performance and that gorgeous screen make this the ultimate programming machine if budget isn't a concern. Most underrated, Apple MacBook Air M4. The M4 MacBook Air is seriously impressive for coding, and I'm shocked board developers aren't talking about it. I've been running multiple programming environments simultaneously without any slowdowns with the M4 chip delivering about 20% better single-core performance than the M3. 
During my testing, it handled lighter benchmarks like a Champ, matching actively cooled models in Geekbench and graphics tests. The only time I noticed throttling was during intensive video encoding tasks, where the fanless design causes it to slow down a bit. Battery life is stellar at around 18 hours, giving me a full day of coding without hunting for outlets. Just be aware it does heat up during intensive tasks, like running local LLMs. You tried a ward. Lenovo ThinkPad T16 Gen 3. I really wanted to love the ThinkPad T16 Gen 3, but it left me feeling underwhelmed when coding on it. The performance is frankly disappointing for a 16-inch laptop with a Intel Core Ultra processor hitting thermal limits quickly during sustained workloads. During my testing, I noticed the CPU temperatures reaching a concerning 100 degrees Celsius under medium loads. The laptop does have some redeeming qualities. The track point is precise as always, and the touchpad has a firm, satisfying click. I appreciate the repairability with its customer replaceable components and impressive 9.3 out of 10 iFixit score. But for programming work, the weak GPU performance and thermal throttling make it hard to recommend even when better options exist. Most overrated, Razer Blade 14. The Razer Blade 14 looks gorgeous and feels premium, but it's seriously overpriced for what you get as a programming machine. I found the keyboard uncomfortably crammed during long session coding, and it gets noticeably warm in the middle. Not ideal when you're typing for hours. While gaming performance is impressive for the size, pushing 120 to 135 FPS in control at 1080p, I couldn't justify it the $2,200 price tag just for occasional gaming breaks between coding. Battery life is the only one pleasant surprise, lasting over 9 hours in the PC Mark 10 test, but the fingerprint attracting chassis and grainy webcam are constant annoyances. You're paying a massive premium for the Razer brand and slim design when there are more practical options for developers. Most innovative, Microsoft Surface Laptop 7. The Surface Laptop 7 completely changed my workflow with its Snapdragon X Elite processor that wakes instantly and handles everything I throw at it. The 120Hz display is ridiculously bright at over 600 bits and makes coding for hours actually pleasant on my eyes. Battery life is absolutely epic. I coded for an entire workday without reaching for the charger. The keyboard is one of the best I've used on a portable, though I keep accidentally hitting that co-pilot key when I'm in the zone. What really impressed me was how seamlessly it runs both native ARM apps and x86 programs through Microsoft's Prism emulator. I couldn't tell the difference. Shut up and take my money, Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i Gen 9. I fell in love with this laptop the moment I started using it. The 120Hz 2880 to 1800 display is absolutely stunning with 100% sRGB and 99% DCI-B3 coverage that made my code look crisp and my test websites pop. The keyboard is perfect for marathon coding sessions and the Intel Lunar Lake processor handled everything from multiple VES code instances to Docker containers without breaking a sweat. Battery life is ridiculous. I got 13 hours of continuous use on a single charge. The all-metal build feels premium in hand and the dual fan cooling system kept everything running cool and quiet even during compile jobs. The only frustrations were the mediocre webcam and oddly placed power button. But I can overlook these for over everything else this machine offers. Looks cool, does nothing. Dell Inspiron 14 Plus. The Dell Inspiron 14 Plus initially impressed me with its sharp 2.2K display and attractive all aluminum design that felt premium in hand. Battery life was genuinely impressive during my coding sessions, easily lasting a full workday. However, once I started pushing it with actual development work, the thermal issues became obvious. CPU temperatures spiked to 110 degrees Celsius, causing noticeable throttling that slowed down my compile times. The touchpad was frustratingly mediocre, making precise cursor movements a chore when editing code. Despite looking like a capable machine, it ultimately disappointed with its thermal limitations and lackluster performance for everything beyond basic programming tasks. The blotware was also ridiculous. Nearly 70GB of my 512GB SSD was already consumed before I even installed my development tools. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. For more videos like this in the future, remember to leave a like and subscribe. Alright, peace out.